Today we're taking a look at some NHL trade rumors focusing on the Montreal Canadiens and Pittsburgh Penguins. We have some injury updates as well as some news on the waiver wire. And the Vancouver Canucks might have some more help coming before the season's out. We'll jump into all the latest coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. Now, as I mentioned, we have a variety of things to talk about here today. Let's first jump into a couple of quick news items. Now, of course, this video is being recorded on Friday night. It's likely not going to be on YouTube until either late Friday night or early Saturday morning. Uh, so just keep that in mind. But Brandon Peary was on waivers in, uh, with the Chicago Blackhawks, and he did end up clearing. So Peary was not claimed. Uh, there was no other NHL players on waivers. There was one player put on for unconditional waivers for the purpose of termination. It was just a prospect that... Never materialized. It was drafted four or five years ago. Um, but at this point, there's no other activity there really worth mentioning from the waiver wire. Uh, on the injury update front, the Maple Leafs are going to be uh, battling the injury bug for a little while. Jumbo Joe Thornton uh, looks like he's got some kind of a rib issue and he's going to be out for about a month or so. They did end up placing him on long-term injury reserve, so he's going to be out for a minimum of 28 days. And Austin Matthews is also injured. Doesn't look like it's overly serious, but as we talked about in the last couple of days, he did uh, miss practice. There were some people thinking maybe he had uh, you know, a bit of an issue with Sheldon Keefe because of his comments after their last uh, loss to the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, but it looks as though he is battling an injury of some sort and is going to be out of action for tonight's game. I'm not sure if he'll be out beyond that or not, but two-thirds of the Leafs' top line is now not available to them so we'll see how things go they've already had some other injuries as well uh, so they're going to obviously have to mix in some more of those depth forwards that they brought in and see how things work out now as i mentioned as well the vancouver canucks might have some help coming along here likely as early as mid-march when the khl season is over there's a lot of speculation that they will be able to sign one of their top prospects and Vasily paul colson of course paul colson uh, was the team captain for russia at the world juniors had a really strong tournament uh, and he is uh, going to be available to possibly sign here uh, in the middle of March when the season comes to an end or so. So uh, we'll see if Pod Colson makes the plunge and jumps to the NHL or if he decides to re-up and stay in the KHL a little bit longer. But obviously he's one of their top prospects. They've got Hoaglander in the lineup here now to start the year, who's been pretty decent so far as well. Uh, the Canucks did end up with a pretty, you know, fairly bad loss to Montreal last night in a 7-3 loss. Uh, so we'll see what they decide to do here. If they want to inject some more youth, uh, he can get up to seven games in without burning a year of his contract. So it wouldn't be shocking if they sign him, not to say that he'll necessarily get more than that. It kind of depends on where things are at with the Canucks in their season, essentially. Uh, but Paul Colson could be joining the Canucks here uh, before the season is out. And there's also a lot of people talking and wondering if they will bring back Russian defenseman Nikita Triamkin. Of course, uh, he at one point played with the Canucks went back to the KHL, and at this point, looks as though he has improved a lot. I know the reports out of the KHL indicate that right now he's one of the stronger defensemen in the league. He's a really huge guy. He can skate well, move the puck, and, and right now, especially based on how the last game went uh, against the Montreal Canadiens, that would certainly be quite helpful. The other issue, I know it's right now, it's a little early, but the Canucks are certainly having their fair share of injury bugs as well on the blue line too. They've gone through a lot of defensemen already in this season with uh, several guys having to miss at least a little bit of time. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. It was really uh, quite possible and rumored that they were going to sign him for this season. Uh, I know his agent was under the impression there was a lot of interest and they kind of waited and waited and waited and eventually they decided not to sign him near the last minute. He went back to Russia. Um, so, you know, it, it is possible that they, they may not bring him back, but based on how much he's improved and considering that they really could benefit, I think, from his services at this point, depending on where things are at with the season in March, I can't help but wonder if they could consider signing him for the rest of the season or not, uh, or maybe they'll wait and do it for next year. I don't know, but Nikita Triankin is a, a, an interesting piece with Vancouver. Uh, I know, like I said, when he was first in the NHL, things didn't really work out the best. Uh, but he seems to have improved substantially. And given, like I said, what he can bring, what he's developed into, I think it would be a very interesting uh, piece that they could add back there on their blue line. So we'll see how the Canucks are doing. I know this is in a very tough Canadian division, and uh, all these teams are going to be battling it out. And it's difficult to say right now who are going to be the playoff teams and who are not going to be uh, because it's, it's really hard night after night. We've seen a lot of teams have big wins followed by a big loss, and it just is going back and forth. Eventually, things will probably level out, but 
Uh, you know, I personally wondered if the Canucks would maybe take a step back this year given the division changes because of the shortened season. But we will see. But the Canucks could certainly have some very interesting help on the way later in the March once the KHL season is over and those players become available to sign contracts. So, as I mentioned as well, we want to look at some NHL trade talk involving the Penguins and the Habs. Now, first up with Montreal, uh, there's certainly uh, some interesting information that have come out in the last day or so regarding Philip Deneau. Now, we know that Philip Deneau had some interesting comments in the offseason about, uh, you know, where his role was in the bubble and not being thrilled with kind of being the number three center. He's a pending unrestricted free agent, but he's been very, very good for them. He's been there for a while now. He's developed into being a top center uh, and has really been good enough to get himself into selkie conversations as well. Highly respected as a really good two-way player. The defensive side of the puck is certainly often better than the offensive side lately, uh, depending on who he's matched with for line mates, of course. But there was a long stretch of time in Montreal where he was used in a number one center role, even though, in my opinion, it wasn't really because he was so strong offensively is because of a lack of better options. As they've improved their depth and these younger kids have come along and uh, proven to be really good as well, like Suzuki especially, it's kind of bumped him down the lineup here a little bit, and he's getting more defensive responsibilities. Um, and clearly that's you know not something he seemed thrilled about, but at the same time still seems to be a good teammate and trying to make the best of it here. But the reports that just came out were that he, he rejected a pretty substantial extension um, contract from Montreal this past offseason. It was rumored that he was given a six-year contract at $5 million a season, and he turned it down. So that's a lot of term and a lot of money. I, I have no doubt Montreal would prefer to keep Deneau in the fold here, but it is going to be tricky from a salary cap perspective. Now, the other thing I don't know is at what time in the offseason that contract was offered because obviously they spent a lot of other money between Josh Anderson, and Tyler Toffoli, they extended Jake Allen, got Jake, uh, they, they got Evanson signed on the back end. Like, you know, hard to say. They need to find room here for some of their kids to be able to get contract extensions in a couple of years between Suzuki, Kakaniemi, Romanov. They're all going to be looking for some bigger money. So they, they got to be careful here. And as much as they love to know, it's going to be tricky to keep them in the fold. And if they can't get them to agree on a $5 million contract, that tells me that he likely wants more money or he's willing to move on for similar money in a bigger role with another team. So... It's difficult to say, but knowing that he rejected that extension and knowing his comments and how you know he wasn't thrilled with his role, I just can't help but wonder if the time is going to come here for Deneau's time in Montreal to be up. I don't see them making a, a push to trade him, even though he was a pending UFA, unless he was involved in a deal for like a Pierre-Luc Dubois. Now, we talked about in our last video with Dubois being pretty much done in Columbus. I think it's fair to say that he'll be traded sooner than later, and Montreal is rumored to be in the mix and he's rumored to want Montreal as one of his top destinations for a trade. So if that did ever materialize, I'm not sure what Columbus is going to want, but I could see how Montreal might push to include Deneau. Like I said, as much as they really would not want to, they're not going to want to give up Suzuki either. And Columbus is really heavily rumored to want someone who can play top six center minutes in return. So clearly that could be a fit. He's young enough, strong two-way player, would be the kind of player Tortorella would like there as well. So I could see that possibly being a fit. But I guess we'll see. Unless a trade like that went down, I don't see any other scenario where they would move them this year. They're doing really well so far. They're more than likely going to be a playoff team. And obviously they're not going to want to subtract going into the playoffs. So not likely going to happen. But I can see a scenario where maybe his, if he does finish, the, I could see a scenario where if he does finish the season with Montreal and they don't pull off any significant trades for Dubois or something comparable, that maybe his rights be traded in the offseason before free agency officially gets underway. Because uh, if he's not agreeing to a $5 million contract, how much would you be willing to pay Philip Deneau is the question, especially for Montreal fans. Given their cap situation, do you want to get him tied up to a five and a half, six million million, $6 million contract, or possibly even more when you have younger players like Suzuki, Kakani, and me, et cetera, that are going to be looking for you know fairly big money here in a couple of years' time as well. Like I said, he's a great guy. He'd love to see the strong two-way play. But the number's going to fit, and right now, it seems like that's going to be a very big issue. Now, of course, I also want to mention the Pittsburgh Penguins today. Of course, it's well known that GM Jim Rutherford is pretty aggressive and not overly patient. And right now, the Penguins haven't had the best start to the season. And now they find themselves in a couple of predicaments. They have a banged-up blue line. They're already without Mike Matheson on a longer-term basis. They do have some more injuries to guys like Marcus Pedersen and Yusuf Rikula. 
So they're already looking for help on defense. They're already running through a lot of their depth players. So Jim Rutherford has been rumored to be looking on the market, trying to see what he can acquire either through the waiver wire or through some kind of a small trade for a depth defenseman. Now, he obviously at this point may not necessarily be looking for somebody who can be a top two, top four. Doesn't have to be anything that crazy, but somebody who can be a reliable third pair defenseman and kind of go in and out of your lineup, a number six, number seven kind of guy would probably be something that they would prefer, something that's not going to cost a whole lot, maybe a mid-round pick or a fringe prospect, something to that effect. But, you know, obviously that's not going to be easy to find. Uh, given that right now a lot of teams are just kind of settling in here. Over time, though, there will be guys come available. That much is forgiven. And the other thing you got to wonder is how they're feeling about their goaltending. I mean, the Penguins have a lot of firepower up front. I don't see there being too much of a shakeup there. Uh, I wouldn't think, at least, because they've did a lot of maneuvering over the offseason. You've got Crosby and Malkin, who are you know, obviously still really solid players. Other members of your top six, like Jake Gensel, Jason Zucker, you get Kapanen just joined the team. Brandon Tanev is a pretty good player who can jump up as well. Like They're not too bad off in the forward group. I think their their depth there is decent. But on the goaltending situation, Jerry and DeSmith have not been cutting it so far. They're both well under 900 save percentage. Jerry's under 800 save percentage. Like They're not doing well at all. I think they're really, at this point, maybe regretting trading Matt Murray. They didn't really get a whole lot for him either. And he's been pretty well for Ottawa. Outside of their last game against the Jets, Murray has been really solid and a big key to their other games that were either one or close games. They had an overtime loss in there as well. So, like, you know, he's been good. They haven't been. So I'm not so sure that Rutherford's going to go out and shake things up via trade here just yet because there's not, I don't think, a ton of options right now. And it's a little early, but the Penguins are certainly, like I said, they're not known to be a patient team. They want to be in the mix to win again. And uh, we'll see what Rutherford does. His primary target right now is a depth defenseman. But if that goaltending doesn't get better, I don't think it's going to matter how much the, the, the blue line and the forward group play and do well. That's going to be a struggle. And I can't but wonder if later in the season if we could see a trade. Unless it's Jerry and Smith are still young and you want to give them a chance. Uh, you know, they don't have crazy contracts or anything. Swinging a deal for the right guy might not be too difficult. But it depends on what the return package has to be. To make it work. So let me know what you think Pittsburgh's going to do to try to get their house in order and have a shot at the playoffs here because right now I certainly have some concerns over their ability to do that. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comments and we'll discuss further. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and turning on your notifications so you don't miss any future content and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I'd appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you for watching and I'll catch you next time.